After recently having marathoned all previous 21 films in the MCU in anticipation for Avengers Endgame, we here at Fat Ninja discovered we have a few questions lingering. From where are they now characters to plot threads that seem to have been forgotten, we've compiled a list of our top queries. This is your host, Raging Antibody. Possible spoilers ahead, so let's get right down to it. Number 12. Where are Betty Ross, Emil Blonsky, Samuel Stearns, and Leonard Sampson? For this, we are going back to the beginning of the MCU timeline. Although it technically has been answered via one-shot comic, it is not as satisfying as seeing it play out on the big screen. So far, the only thing that seems to have carried over from the Incredible Hulk is General Thaddeus Ross, and not much else. Given how much time has passed since the first and only Hulk-centric film in the MCU, we have high doubts that these characters will ever make a reappearance. However, it would be nice to see Bruce reunite with his once beloved, or see the, what the Abomination has been up to. Even Leonard Sampson, who has a much larger role in the comics under the moniker of Doc Sampson, would be an interesting addition to the supporting characters for the new Avengers as they go into the more science and space exploration. Number 11. Ego's Assimilation Seeds during the climactic events at the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we see Ego using Peter Quill to feed the seeds on planets like Earth as they grow into these blob-like, all-consuming creatures. The question is, where were the Avengers? Where was S.H.I.E.L.D.? Why doesn't anyone on Earth ever bring it up? Did it happen in a split second and then dissipate? Did S.H.I.E.L.D. cover it up Men in Black style by erasing everyone's memories? Or was it just a plot point that got overlooked by the MCU overlords that could possibly get answered when Volume 3 finally releases? Maybe Captain Marvel went to investigate and during the events of Endgame, she will run into the Guardians and they will know one another. We will just have to wait and see. Number 10. Justin Hammer, Hammer Tech, and AIM After being introduced in Iron Man 2, the last mention we ever get of Justin Hammer is the exosuit and weapons at the finale for Luke Cage on Netflix. As for advanced idea mechanics, that all seemed to die when Killian went up in flames on the cargo ship. However, would these companies simply go under just because of this? We here at Fat Ninja have come up with some theories regarding the possibility of AIM surviving into the future of the MCU. With ideas like Hammer buying the remaining shares in the company, or possibly the real Mandarin taking over. And then there are future characters we haven't yet seen on screen, like MODOK for example. With Tony Stark's time in the MCU almost up though, there's not much hope that these will ever be revisited, but we have been surprised before. Number 9. The Infinity Gauntlet Copies In Avengers Infinity War, we learned from Eitri that the dwarves had been reproached by Thanos some time ago to make him the gauntlet. No exact date is given, and that creates a couple of problems. For one, did Thanos come up with the gauntlet, and if so, why did Odin have a replica? Or did Thanos learn of the gauntlet through the Asgardians and seek the f to forge one for himself? How long had Eitri been alone on Nidavellir? Did Asgard or Odin never check on him regularly? Why not a distress signal? This tiny plot point leads to so many questions, and sure, it's hard to answer them all in a single film, especially without being able to retcon as frequently as one can with the comics, but it's like a tiny thorn in the side of us fans that just begs for some attention. Number 8. Gamora's homeworld. When we first meet her, we learned that she is the last of her kind, but that isn't exactly true. During the events of Infinity War, Thanos mentions that her people are flourishing on her homeworld after he had wiped out half the population. So the question we at Fat Ninja ask is, why hasn't she tried going home then? Granted, her mother is dead, but does she have any family left beyond that? Maybe she could have helped them find a way uh, to hide the stones or stop Thanos by creating an interplanetary alliance. Or just maybe, the saying is true, that you can never really go home again. Number 7. Where is the Collector? This one is fairly recent, as we sort of see him in Infinity War. Then it turned out he was just an illusion as nowhere burned on after Thanos attacked it for the Reality Stone. So where is the Collector then? Did he escape and perhaps seek refuge with his brother, the Grand Master? Or did Thanos kill him and toss his corpse to the fire without a second glance? The Collector's collection was a massive and held many interesting easter eggs referencing the comics, so it's hard to see an expansion into the more cosmic territory that Phase 4 promises without his presence. Perhaps we will see him aid the Avengers in Endgame. Self-preservation was the top of his list after all. Number 6. Goose 
In the recent film Captain Marvel, we finally got our answer to how Fury lost his eye. The adorable yet dangerous flurkin, Goose, scratched it out and stole the show most of the film. Then there's the end credits scene, where he regurgitates the Tesseract onto Fury's desk and goes back to lay down. The question that comes after that is, if all this happened roughly before 2012, the year during the Avengers film, where is Goose? Did he leave the planet? Did he die? Or is he possibly locked in an, or stationed on the raft, keeping an eye on the other big baddies? Maybe we will see him again in Endgame, but it's highly doubtful. Number 5. Black Widow and Hawkeye and the Budapest Story this one isn't so much a plot hole as it is a straight curiosity. Twice in the films, they mention a mission in Budapest where Hawkeye saved Black Widow from herself and put her on the path of good. Yet we never get that story, do we? With talks about a solo Black Widow film in the works, we can only hope that the main story will revolve around that particular mission, but currently there isn't any concrete information to back up our desires. If you were to choose a story for the Black Widow film, what would you like to see? Tell us in the comments below. Number 4. Hydra in Civil War? One of the questions that popped up for us after a recent viewing of Captain America Civil War was right near the opening sequence. Crossbones attacks the facility to get some sort of viral weapon, and of course the Avengers intervene when Grillo decides to turn himself into a human bomb and sets off the events that proceed throughout the film. However, who hired him? The obvious answer would be Baron Von Zemo, as he seems to have orchestrated the entire film's events to tear the Avengers apart. But even that is somewhat a stretch of how he could have known it would lead to the Sokovia Accords and whatnot. So, was Crossbones working for Hydra then? After Winter Soldier, we had thought them all but wiped out, the continuity and Agents of Shields notwithstanding. This begs the question that if it wasn't Zemo or Hydra, then what other shadowy organization is lurking in the background, or was Frank Grillo just working for himself? Number 3. Kraglin at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we see Kraglin donning the fin and using the arrow after calling Peter Quill his captain. Naturally, we all assumed he became the newest member of the Guardians team then, right? However, come Infinity War, he was, a no he was notably absent. Rumors floated around that he felt unsure about returning to the role after the James Gunn debacle. However, we here at Fat Ninja also theorize that since much is unknown about Volume 3, it could be another flashback to an early period in the timeline, and we may see Kraglin go off to crew a ship of his own, or join up with Stakar and the other Ravagers. Still, we miss his heartfelt loyalty, and we think that maybe he could have done something to comfort Star-Lord and keep him from having lost his cool towards Thanos. Number 2. Tracking the Package One of the more interesting questions that came up during our rewatching of the MCU films was during Infinity War when we asked ourselves how Thanos was even able to track the Infinity Stones in the first place. We came up with two answers, sort of. In the comics, attaining the Mind Stone lets you basically know everything you want to know, the instant you want to know it. Now, originally, Thanos did have the Mind Stone in his possession, concealed in the staff he gives to Loki. It is possible that he used the stone then to pinpoint where they all were, but that doesn't mesh well with later events, such as having to question Gamora on the whereabouts for the Soul Stone. Then, there's of course his network of spies and mercenaries, which we know to be true, as in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, we learn that Peter Quill was hired to track down and retrieve the Power Stone. However, our theory is more based on an interview we saw with the Russo brothers and Kevin Feige, where they claim that the stones themselves want to be together. This is interesting, as it hasn't already been addressed in the MCU films yet, just that short summary, summary that Wong gave us at the beginning of Infinity War. Since Endgame seems to be diving into time travel and possibly having the Avengers assemble their own gauntlet, maybe we will get to see firsthand how the stones call one to one another. Number 1. The Celestials And finally, we come to our number one spot. During Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, we learned that the Celestials once wielded the Infinity Stones themselves when the Collector showed a flashback hologram of Isan the Searcher destroying a planet using the Power Stone. Since then, we've also learned that Ego was one of the Celestials, at least in the MCU, and that Peter Quill was at one point part Celestial himself. But what happened to the others? We also know that Nowhere was a former Celestial turned space base after he was decapitated, so this begs the question, was there a war at some point and were they all wiped out? Or are many of them in hiding, biding their time to take power again, possibly having influenced Thanos' actions and wiping out half the life in the universe so that it would be easier for them to take over? 
There are so many possibilities heading into the cosmic landscape of Phase 4, we can barely contain our own excitement. Just imagine what the battles could look like. Well, that was our list. What did you think? Feel free to leave us a comment below, and if you enjoyed the video, hit like, share, and subscribe to get more content from us as we continue to grow. You can tweet us at StudiosFat, or find us on Patreon if you wish to support us further. This has been your host, Raging Antibody, and we can't wait to see you guys at our first live Q&A after Avengers Endgame. Excelsior.